One of the neat things about PowerShell is its willingness to help you out. For example, once you know a command, it's like dir, you can just run help dir, or if you are a Unix person, you can run man dir to get a, a simple help listing, just like this one. Now, I will caution you, one thing you probably don't want to do, at least not as you're getting used to the shell, is run get help dir. Uh, that'll work, but as you can see, it doesn't automatically paginate so you'll have to spend a lot of time scrolling up. And it does a couple of other things that are a little bit different. When you run help as opposed to get help, or man as opposed to get help, it kind of adds on a few parameters for you and does a, a couple of neat little things for you. It's easier to, to kind of get going with it. So let's just take a, a brief look at what's going on here. Uh, you can see that the real command name is get-childitem. It's not dir. Dir and ls are, are both aliases or nicknames to this command name. So this is what actually gets the children of a particular item. Now if that item is a folder, then the children are more folders and files. If the item you're getting the children of happens to be a registry key, then the child items might be more registry keys and so forth. So there's a little bit of a uh, typing convention here that you should be aware of. For example, notice this first parameter, dash path, is completely contained in square brackets. And that means I can run the command without typing this parameter at all. This outer square brackets mean that the parameter is optional. In fact, if you look carefully, all of these different parameters are optional. Well, that means I should be able to run this just by running get dash child item or one of its aliases, dir. And you can. It turns out it defaults to the current path, so you don't need to type any parameters. What if you do want to type a path, though? You don't want a directory of the current directory, you want it of a different one. Well, we're used to doing stuff like dir c colon. And that works fine, too. Uh, you could have typed dir dash path c colon backslash, and that'll work. So what's the difference between those? Well, the dash path parameter name is also in square brackets, meaning it is also optional. So if I just provide a string in this position, meaning if I provide a string in the first position, it'll take that string and assume that I meant it for use with the dash path parameter. These two square brackets bumped right up against one another don't mean that something is optional. Because they're bumped right up against one another, they actually mean I could provide more than one value there. So I could type dir c colon, uh, I could do c colon windows, or c colon, oh, what else is probably on here, users. So by separating each of those values with a comma, I told PowerShell to retrieve a directory of all three of those paths. So that's what this always means in the help, that the the parameter can accept multiple values, and a comma-separated list is one way to provide those values. Something a little different is going on with the dash exclude parameter. It's optional, but the dash exclude parameter name is not included in square brackets. Now that means if I want to use dash exclude, I have to type it. I cannot just provide the value. The parameter name itself is mandatory. So that would look something like this, dir dash exclude star dot txt, for example. Now, I don't actually have to type all of the dash exclude. I only need to type enough of the parameter name so that PowerShell can tell the difference between what I'm trying to get and, and what the other options are. If we scroll back up here to the help, see path starts with a P, filter starts with an F, F, I, N. I actually could just type dash E, and that would work just fine because there's no other parameter that starts with dash E. Uh, if there was a parameter that started with E, then I might need to type EX or or EXCL, or a little bit more of the parameter name, just so PowerShell can tell the difference. Another important thing to note here is that we're looking at two different parameter sets. That's one parameter set, and this is the second parameter set. The only difference between them is this literal path parameter being in the first position, or the dash path parameter being in the first position. When PowerShell has got multiple parameter sets, there's always some difference between them. Now, once I start using a particular parameter set, I'm trapped into it. I, I can't use any parameters that don't appear in that parameter set. So if I were to type dir dash literal path, then I could only use any parameters that appear in this parameter set. And with this particular command, I'm fortunate in that it looks like everything is pretty much identical between the two. So choosing path versus dash literal path doesn't really present a big problem. But what are the differences between those two? Well, here's your final lesson in using help. 
As you start using the shell, rather than just asking for help, ask for the full help. And as you can see, this breaks down each parameter in much more detail, including telling me exactly what each one does. And it also concludes with some great examples. Uh, in the case of Get Child Item, there are seven examples total that show you how those different parameters are meant to be used. So the dash full help is a great way to go. And as a last tip, if you find that you, you, you've run across something that you think might be a typo or might be incorrect, there's always a URL to the online version of the help. And you can get to that very easily by using dash online. And as you can see, that'll open up my default web browser and go to the TechNet website where this commandlet is documented. Now the benefit of having this online is that Microsoft can update this whenever they need to. You can see that this topic online was updated on April 21st, 2010, at the, the time I shot this demo. So if there's a problem in the built-in help, it might be resolved in the online help. And you'll also find community content down at the end where other users and, and PowerShell aficionados can post additional helpful comment, tips, and examples.